This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. I'm joined today by Gabriel Glussman, who is Senior Cyber Intelligence Analyst at the company SixScale. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited to have you on and learn more about SixScale, so let's get started. Sure. So now for the people who might not already know, could you give us a brief explanation of what the dark web is exactly? Okay. So uh, there's a lot of, uh, sometimes there's a little bit of confusion. There's a little bit of a blurred line between uh, what people know as the deep web or people call the dark web. Mm. Um, so the deep web uh, is about 96, considered to be about 96% of the entirety of the content available on the internet. Uh, so I would say 4% is uh, what is uh, indexed by regular search, search engines mm -hmm. uh, like Google, like Bing, and so on. Uh, and this is what most people navigate through in their everyday life. Uh, the other 96% is considered the deep web. And it's uh, all sorts of things like the inside of your Facebook account, your, your Gmail account, uh, things like... Uh, uh, content that is within uh, corporate networks and, and, and uh, uh, documents and, and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Now, uh, then we have what's called the darknet. And in order to understand what is the darknet, uh, we need to talk a little bit about uh, cybercrime. And uh, the thing is, in the last couple of years, I would say the last 10 years or so, uh, cybercrime has become so sophisticated uh, because of the um, security solutions that companies have developed to defend themselves from uh, cyber attacks, uh, it's become harder and harder to perpetrate some kind of an attack. Uh, so cyber criminals uh, need to specialize. Uh, it, it becomes virtually impossible to know everything that a cyber criminal needs to know to be able to do everything from start to finish. So they need to specialize in certain areas and then partner with other cyber criminals that may be able to provide them different kinds of services. So this generates the need for them to gather in different communities, mm -hmm. uh, whereas it could be forums, it could be chats, we see them in social media, we see them in um, instant messaging apps like Telegram, like WhatsApp, uh, and so on. So uh, basically what we consider the darknet uh, is Things that are on, it might be on the deep web, might be on the clear net, mm -hmm. but uh, we consider the dark net uh, when, when we think about the intent. So everything that has criminal intent, for me, I consider it to be part of the dark net and not to be confused, as I said, with the deep web. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And now I'm wondering, how are attacks from the dark web different? Are they more dangerous to organizations? Uh, yes, for the most part, yes. Um, and uh, the thing is, uh, nowadays, every day more and more, there is uh, more information being shared. Uh, the cyber criminals are training each other. So they, they gather in this in these communities where they train each other, they trade with each other, uh, they make things easier for each other. So different kinds of cyber criminal offerings uh, are becoming more service oriented. Uh -huh. So you have things like fraud as a service, you have things like ransomware as a service, things like phishing as a service, where, for example, if I wanna launch a ransomware attack and I don't have the technical knowledge to code my own ransomware or to even run my own infection campaign, I can simply just pay somebody else to do it for me and give them whatever target I want. Yep. And it's just, a matter of, it's just a matter of hiring a service. Uh, so this is all happening on the darknet. Uh, it's all happening on these communities that uh, that we monitor, and uh, and 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 it makes uh, things much more dangerous because again, it's 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 a community, it's a living, breathing thing that's feeding off 
uh, of, on, on, on and off of itself uh, constantly. Um, so uh, without this, this medium of communication, obviously it would be much harder for them to do what they do. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I'm wondering, do you find that most attacks originate from the dark web? Uh, I would say uh, there are different kinds of attacks. Okay. Uh, so uh, usually it's divided. It depends on what the intent of the cyber criminal is. Right. So uh, and, and why? What is the objective? So, for example, uh, you have two different types of cyber criminals. You have the cyber criminals that are after a financial gain, mm -hmm. and the cyber criminals that are fighting for some kind of ideal. Um, mm -hmm. So on, 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 on the ideal side of things, you will find uh, the terrorists, you will find the hacktivists like Anonymous. Uh, on the financial side of things, you will find all of the fraudsters, all of the ones that, that do the, the, the steal the credit cards, that steal the bank accounts, that uh, work with the, with the mule banking and wire transfers, uh, phishing, ransomware, everything that were the final intent is to get a monetary benefit mm -hmm. uh, so that would be obviously on the financial side so when you see things for example like uh, hacktivism and terrorism uh, you will see it uh, happening a lot more on places like Twitter or places like telegram uh, where they share different lists of uh, proposed targets for different campaigns uh, mm -hmm. and places for example they like Twitter a lot because it's very easy to spread a message um, so in case of, of Anonymous, for example, uh, they really like Twitter. Uh, in the case of uh, terrorism, they're very, very heavily present on Telegram mm -hmm. uh, because Telegram is encrypted. Uh, nowadays, WhatsApp is also encrypted, but it didn't used to be. So, uh, so they started and they stayed on Telegram. And we see a lot of, we monitor lots of Telegram channels that are related to terrorism um, and terrorist groups. Uh, on the financial side of things, you will see them much more in the forums, in the, in, in the chats. Okay. Um, and there you will find uh, things like people targeting uh, healthcare records, uh, people targeting financial institutions, uh, people targeting, um, like I said, banks, credit cards. Uh, that is w the most prevalent thing that you're going to find. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Now tell me more about your product, Dark Eye. How exactly does that work? Okay. Dark Eye is uh, basically on, on, what the, on, on the user side, what you see is a portal with a, with a dashboard where you have uh, a summary of all different sorts of alerts and notifications they can set up based on different queries and different searches when, when, when you're setting up what is interesting for you. Uh, what uh, what you want to be monitoring automatically um, uh, on the back side the way it works is we have our own uh, proprietary crawlers that we develop in-house and they go automatically to all of the different sources that we want to monitor and they bring all of the information in-house uh, now the biggest advantage of that is that uh, the, once the information is in our database it's not lost even if we have the cases like we had the case last year of uh, marketplaces like Alpha Bay and Hansa that are taken down by the authorities, mm -hmm. or if they do exit scams, uh, those those sources of information, those communities will be taken offline. Uh, but they, we, if if we crawl them, if we brought them into our database, they still remain fully searchable as if they were still online. Nice. So once the information is in our database. It's processed by uh, our machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms, and all of the information is tagged with all sorts of different categories uh, that make it uh, a lot easier to navigate through uh, and, and, and basically to cut through the noise and get to the relevant information much faster. Very nice. Okay. And now speaking of algorithms, I know SixScale uses advanced algorithms and profiling methods. Can you go into more detail about how that works? Well, um, the way this works is, like I said, once a piece of information comes into the database, it will be analyzed mm -hmm. and it will be tagged. It will, there, there are different categories that will be applied to that particular piece of information, whether it's a post, whether it's 
something that somebody published on Pastebin or a tweet or something mm -hmm. from Reddit, doesn't matter, it comes into the database, it will be analyzed. And uh, if, for example, it's talking about uh, something related to healthcare, it, it will be tagged with healthcare tag. If it's something related to, with credit cards, it will be tagged with something with, with the credit card tag. And uh, one single piece of information might content, might be tagged with more than one tag, mm -hmm. or it might not be tagged with anything. And the tags we develop them, uh, we assign categories and we develop these tags, uh, having in mind things that might be uh, relevant within the context of an intelligence operation. So, for example, if we bring a post from Pacebin and, and it's talking about something that, uh, you know, it's just a piece of code that somebody shared to share with somebody else mm -hmm. that will remain in our database and it can be searched through a regular keyword search. It just won't be tagged with anything with any relevant category. At the same time, and one of the things that we do, and I, and I, I believe it's, it's quite uh, unique to us, is we do a threat actor profile. So uh, we look at the threat actor, at the individual that posted, and we do mm -hmm. uh, analysis on his social network, how he is interacting with the mm -hmm. other actors in the community, who is he replying to, who is replying to him, uh, what are the different times of the day and the different days of the week where he's posting more or less, mm -hmm. uh, and all sorts of things like that. And once you find something that is relevant, uh, you can set up all sorts of different alerts that you can uh, prioritize based on the content. Uh, we use things like uh, natural language processing uh, to identify, like I said, what are the posts uh, talking about and apply those tags. Uh, we also collect uh, all of the images at just like they are posted in these communities and we run OCR on top of these images. So uh, all of the text that is available on the image is also uh, searchable through the search just as, as if it was plain text um, and that uh, that uh, helps you prioritize the information uh, uh, at the same time we take into consideration things like okay this threat actor uh, these communities work based on a reputation system so we take into consideration what kind of a reputation this threat actor has in the community where he is ah. posting so that we can determine whether you know this is a, this actor has a low credibility or a high credibility, or if he was uh, um, if he was singled out by um, fellow uh, community members as a scammer, uh, or if he is a highly reputed actor that really knows what he's talking about, or he's selling really good quality merchandise of whatever he's selling. So all of this is taken into consideration and. One of the things that we do is we apply a general score to each actor so that depending on the piece of information that you have, you can look at who it comes from and, and have some sort of uh, uh, idea of uh, how much you can take this seriously or not. Nice. Yeah, that is a really cool way of looking at it. I mean, like you said, sometimes the best way to in infiltrate is right from the inside and to be able to know what his reputation is in the community. That's huge. Very cool. Okay. Now, I'm wondering, so if you do come across chatter on the dark web about a potential attack, what exactly are the next steps from there? Well, uh, first of all, it depends on what we find. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different procedures depending on the nature of the finding. Uh, there are things like uh, credit cards and bank accounts which can be passed on to the bank or to the issuer and they can choose to either freeze the account or monitor the account or close it or contact the, the, the account holder. Uh, there are things like um, terrorist attacks which we pass the information, you know, when, when you have see uh, terrorist propaganda or they are proposing to do some kind of an attack. Obviously, we pass that information on to the relevant law enforcement authorities. Um, if we find things are uh, more generic, we will share it with all of our customers and we will we will use it uh, depending on, on the industry that if we find something, for example, um, let's say we find uh, some healthcare company got hacked and, and all of the healthcare records are out there for sale or somebody just dumped them out there for everyone mm -hmm. to see. Uh, 
even if this healthcare company is not a customer of us, uh, we may have uh, another healthcare company that is a customer of us, and it's in our interest to understand how this happened so that we can then relate that information back to the healthcare company that is our customer and tell them this is the way it happened and this is what you should do to prevent it. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so basically it's, it, it's not something that is set in stone. Uh, so it's, it's a very uh, personalized uh, service. It's a, it's always, it remains a two-way conversation. We, we, we try to uh, tailor uh, this, this, this solution to whoever the customer is. We, there's a lot of conversation about uh, what they are interested in and, and, and we try to match what we can provide to, to, to provide obviously something that will be relevant and actionable for them. And so now I know that earlier in the year, Sixkill also detected a planned ISIS attack on Prince George in his nursery, and it was uh, widely covered. Now, I know that that's huge. How did you manage to detect that, and what did the process look like? Well, yes, uh, as I mentioned before, we are actively monitoring and gathering information from mm -hmm. all sorts of different uh, channels, uh, terrorists and, and terrorist groups, uh, 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 disseminate all sorts of, of information, propaganda, uh, proposed attacks and operations and things like that. Uh, they use uh, Telegram uh, a lot for that. Uh, so uh, we, we gather all of this information and as part of our regular monitoring efforts, we identified this and um, and obviously, that's that's the way it stems from. When you come up, you you come, uh, you know, through a piece of information like that. Obviously, you relate it back to uh, the uh, relevant authorities. And one one of the biggest advantages that I believe we have is that uh, we have analysts like me. We are all uh, native uh, speakers of many different languages, so we are covering things. Obviously, besides English. Uh, we have native speakers on Spanish, on Portuguese, on Arabic, nice. uh, on Russian, on Chinese. So that's where the real advantage comes from when you are able to read something, being a native speaker and not just, uh, not just uh, uh, reading literally what is being said, but also taking into consideration uh, the, the local slang, uh, things like uh, like the the cultural environment and 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 the surroundings and things that might influence uh, the reasons why people may be saying one thing or another, uh, and a lot of times that dictates that changes uh, the meaning that completely changes the meaning of of what is being said. Uh, whereas if you would be relying on things like Google Translate, mm -hmm. you're not gonna get that at all. Right. Yeah. Having those people on the team, they're able to pick up on all the nuances and like you said, the slang. So that's a huge advantage. Definitely. And now lastly, is there anything else that you'd like to highlight about the company? Uh, well, first of all, uh, we are still a, a rather small company. Uh, we're about to reach uh, about 25 employees. So Congratulations. We'll nice. Thank you. So even though we are, I would say we are past the initial startup uh, face, we are still pretty much a startup. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of, uh, um, uh, family feeling, you know, we all know each other. It's not like you're working with somebody who's mm -hmm. maybe halfway around the world. Um, and so it, that's, you know, in, in that plays a, a really big part. And at the same time, you know, you get the feeling that you're doing something that uh, looks into the future. Uh, something that it's becoming more and more relevant every day uh, because uh, as cybercrime evolves, uh, it's, it's, it's basically uh, a, a necessary thing to have some sort of cyber intelligence solution because uh, as we always say, it's not a matter of whether you're going to face an attack or not. It's just a matter of when and will you be prepared for it. Uh, so I think, I believe that uh, something like this helps you uh, stay uh, a step ahead and understanding the threat before it comes it, it's, it's the first uh, line of defense so uh, you do get the, the, the sense that uh, you're doing something that matters and that looks into the future and it's exciting and at the same time when you talk to people about it they're like oh you're doing cyber intelligence so <laughs> it has a that's a really cool factor too. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah. Gabriel, I agree with you a hundred percent. Definitely. Thank you so much for sitting down and speaking with me today. I appreciate it. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Take care and we'll speak with you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.